You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, new treatment options for people in pain, whether it's low back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, neck pain. Uh, according to my first guest, he says that there are people that are taking opioids that don't have to be, that there's new technology that can stop the pain without medications. With us, we have an interventional pain management specialist, physician. With us, we have Dr. Bill Haney. Dr. Haney, welcome to the program. Thank you, it's good to be here. All right, now for people that don't know your centers, I guess they're all over Kentucky. Um, who's the typical patient you're seeing for pain as an interventional pain management physician? Well, most anybody that has pain, we can see and most likely help and improve their life. We can treat almost any pain that you reference. The most common we see is that of low back pain. But we can treat neck pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, hip pain, foot pain, ankle pain, abdominal, pelvic pain. There's interventional techniques and things that we can do to help most anyone. Okay, now this, this field of interventional pain management, um, it's fairly new, new specialty. Correct. Over the years. And uh, you're, you're, you're board certified at that. T tell us a little bit about your, uh, your bio. Oh, well, I'm uh, born and raised in Eastern Kentucky. Okay. And uh, came to Louisville and went to medical school in Louisville in the late 70s and uh, trained there and uh, went on into interventional pain. And I've been doing that full time for 10 years now. Now, I've talked to your partner there, Dr. Manchikanti. And uh, he started this society, this medical specialty. And I told him, most people don't like dealing with pain patients. And, but he does, and you do too. Yes, what I do. What do you like most about it? Seeing them smile and get better. Okay, that's a good answer. So first off, um, I'm gonna ask you about two main topics, some of these new spinal cord stimulators mm -hmm. to, I guess, change the signal to the brain so they don't feel the pain and then also these implantable devices that administer lower dose medication with better results than taking a pill. So let's start there. So who's a candidate uh, for some of these implantable devices for pain? People that have had chronic pain and you reference they want to get off of opioid or it would be best for them to taper or get off of opioid with their encouragement. Okay. These interventions can be used to treat their pain. With neuromodulation or spinal cord stimulator, uh, imagine if someone were now watching us and said, I don't like that, and they turn the volume down. So how could we turn the volume down on pain? Wow, okay. So let's look at that. Now people talk about the gate theory of pain and how we can do that, but imagine that you got up and walked out the door and whacked your knee going through the door. Okay. One of the first things you might do after you get through your four letter metaphors okay. is reach down and rub your knee. Okay. And you do that because that helps cover and mask the pain. Why did you rub your knee? So let's take that simple concept and say, let's really crank up how that works. Okay. So we put a electronic leader device into the spinal canal and that goes to a programmable electronic stimulation device, and then we use that to mask the pain and cover the pain transmissions from the pain generator that goes to the brain. So you're better. So that person with like the chronic knee pain, low back pain, you put in this stimulation device. It's electronic, are we talking about? It is. Here? And it hits a certain nerves, so your brain doesn't feel it? Correct. It, it like disrupts it, interferes with, the, with yes, the signal? that's correct. Okay, and uh, how effective is that? Oh, it's 80% or better effective, maybe 90% in a lot of cases. You know, we've seen this change people's lives. They come off of opioid, they no longer need their medicines. They're going to church again. They're smiling, interacting better with their family again. They're out shopping again. They're playing golf again. They're taking trips and driving their car again. And it's changed their life. Okay. Now, logically, this all makes sense. If it's as good as you said, it's why aren't they all doing it? Why, why, why aren't people getting that message that, okay, I'm taking all these opioids. Have I considered spinal cord stimulation? Tell me about that. Well, one is the patient may not be aware that it's available. Okay. Uh, their treating physician 
where physicians may not offer the service and unfortunately some of those out in rural communities don't have access to it or easy access to it. So all those things that combine. So we need better education, we need them to be more aware and for referral sources to send them to us more often so we can offer this. Okay, now doc, you know, I've had Dr. Manchikanti on the program uh, before, and which which uh, you know works with you. He says so. Just so I'm correct, somebody's in a lot of pain. They usually start with their primary care physician. They may recommend chiropractic, physical therapy, or whatever, but they start managing them with pain meds, and then when it gets out of control, then they end up referred to the spine surgeon. Is that correct? Usually, That's how very it goes. Common. Mm -hmm. What you'd like is where they're actually see a interventional pain management first, possibly, or at least in the mix. Correct, and typically, in most instances, the earlier the better, because with earlier event of intervention, there's less chance for the opioid component of the problem to have become as pronounced as it was. So are there people, I mean, is it fair to say that there's tens of thousands of people in Kentucky, uh, well, across the country, but in Kentucky that are suffering that don't have to be? Absolutely. Really? There's people we in pain? Could, they could be helped, they could be improved, and their lives changed. For instance, uh, my wife has a close friend and who had a, her father had a significant back pain problem and had seen surgeons and other physicians and been through this, been through that, and nothing worked, and he was home lying down all the time. He was taking a significant amount of opioid medication and he wasn't enjoying his life. Okay. And this friend of my wife asked my wife, would you see, would you have Bill see my dad? And that happened. So this gentleman comes in, he's got low back pain, he's got leg pain that is ridiculous. What he's, does that mean, ridiculous? That means it shoots down a nerve root and it typically goes from your back and then shoots down your leg. Okay. That's ridiculous pain. Okay. And very often, uh, often just the opposite when we call neuropathic pain, it goes the other way. It starts in the little bitty nerves at the end of the neural tree at your feet and it moves the other way. Okay. And uh, so this gentleman came in and he had ridiculous pain, he had back pain, he had neuropathic pain from his diabetes. And uh, he had all these things going on. His life was disrupted. He wasn't enjoying it. And, and he was taking meds currently for that. Taking a significant amount of opioid medication. He had constipation. He had other side effects. He had sleepiness. So after reviewing all of his records and imaging and seeing him, Spinal cord stimulation looked like the thing to do. So what we did was we did a stimulator trial. This is What's for, that? This is for spinal cord stimulation. So we put in a temporary one for three days to seven days, somewhere in there. When you say put in, it's, it's like a little wire lead? It's a little wire lead with electrodes on the tip of it. It's about as big as round as the lead in a pencil or thereabouts. Okay, okay. And we may put in one, we may put in two. It depends on what this patient needs. And we get the coverage we want. And this is a temporary device that will be removed one way or the other. So temporary because you're seeing if it's even going to work. Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, you like to test drive cars. <laughs> we like to try on shoes. Okay. So you're going to like it or not like it. It's going to work or not work. It's going to fit or not fit. Okay. So we do that and it's going to be successful or not. Either way, it comes out after this three to seven day period. So if that's successful, then we put in the permanent stimulating device. So with him, that particular guy that was a friend of uh, your wife's. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, and I, I kept interrupting. So what, what took place with this guy? So you gave him the trial. It changed his life. At this point, he's now off of opioid medication. He has improved quality and function of life. He's enjoying his family and grandchildren more. He's back enjoying golf. He's driving. He's going on vacations. His life is back. That's nice. When you're on a consult with a guy like this, he was referred by your wife, friend of a friend. Hey, Bill, will you, t will you, t will you talk to this patient? Do you ever get excited? Like, 
you kind of get a feel after dealing with thousands of patients where you're thinking, I think this is going to be a home run here. Well, I this do really going to work for yeah, pe- him. I do get, I, I first get very hopeful. Okay. When I have that successful trials, when I get excited. Okay. Because, hey, we got something. So in like three or four days, this guy tells you, Doc, I'm, I almost feel like I don't have pain now. Yeah. What you want to hear is please don't take it out. But oh, we really? got to okay. so we can put in the other one. Yeah, the, one of them, can you leave it in longer, Doc? Please don't take it out. Okay. And so what are the age ranges of people that can uh, get this uh, procedure done? We treat anybody over 18, and it can even be done younger, but typically 18 and up. And I mean, the kind of people that are going to get this spinal cord stimulation instead of medications, because logically it makes sense to me, is it like the holistic crowd, like the people that go to Whole Foods? Is it uh, a combination of both? It's, it's every, everyone. I mean, this can, this can help that patient. It can help another patient. So the real issue is what's the underlying pain? What's the complaint? What's the problem? What's been done? And what can be done? We look at every patient that way, regardless of how we end up treating them. And uh, also, another patient we had, uh, there's an uh, illness used to be called reflex sympathetic dystrophy. It's now referred to as CRPS or complex regional pain syndromes. And without getting into all the medical technology or terminology, it typically is an arm pain or a leg pain that follows an injury or insult where the nerves get lit up and changed and continue to perpetuate a pain that no longer serves any kind of purpose. It's neuropathic and it's the disease itself. Neuropathic means it's, it's the generation from a nerve. Yeah. Being it's neuropathic. Okay. I mean, okay. We boil that down. I mean, pathos means disease and ick mean pertaining to and neuro meaning nerve. So it's okay. a disease pertaining to a nerve. All right. So, uh, so they had this RSD. I'm an old doc. I use the old term. Okay. So, and it was in the ankle and foot and leg. Shooting down to the ankle. Well, when this particular thing, it may shoot up okay. more than shoot down. Okay. So, but it hurts. And they swell. They get discoloration, hair loss, bone loss, code intolerance. It all goes along with this pain that's largely uh, conducted and mediated by the sympathetic nerves. So, stimulation works very well for these patients. And this patient had gone through medical management, seen various doctors, and uh, came in on crutches and limping. So we uh, ended up putting a stimulator in this lady, and it worked very well and helped her symptoms. She went through some physical therapy afterwards and came back in. She's happy, her leg looks better, the pain is essentially gone, and her crutches are nowhere to be seen. All because of this electronic stimulation. What do patients call it? Do they ever say, I, you know, I've heard something about this electronic stimulation or spinal cord stimulation? What do they call it? Most common term I hear just off the street is they're gonna put a stimulator in me. Okay. So, uh, but uh, now are know, some patients, look, things. we've talked a little bit about this in the green room, but pain patients, you know, it's, it's, it's a miserable thing to be in pain. So they're on their opioids, it's being managed properly. Why aren't they all willing to even be open to this idea? Is it because they hear surgery? What is it? Because you well, must face this challenge. Well, the most common rebuttal you hear when it's first brought up is, you mean you're gonna put something in my spine? And the idea of putting a metallic or foreign or other object okay. in their spine is just kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. That's not something we really want to do. And well, let's talk about it. Let's look at the video. Let's read about it. Let's get educated. Uh, we're not going to jump in on anything. You're going to know about it. You're going to be educated. And you're going to participate in the decision because it's my recommendation, but it's your decision. Would you say there's, uh, like within, in, within an hour and a half of your practices, would you say there's thousands of people that could benefit from this procedure that don't even know about it? Well, or it's not even being introduced to them? Certainly, if you look across the state of Kentucky or even the metro Louisville and Jefferson County area, the short answer is yes. Uh, and this number is significant within our own practice when you look at just who's first now coming in. And so. Medicare, I mean, look, insurance covers this. Everything we're talking about today, insurance, 
Medicare, Medicaid covers it. Yes, they do. So it's just a matter of educating the public into doing it. Absolutely. So you treat pain like an emergency, like it's a big deal. Tell me about that. Well, people hurt and getting out of pain is a bit big deal. I mean, a famous philosopher said, the greatest pleasure is the relief of pain. Is this, uh, is this an exciting time for you because it, where technology is really changing the way you practice medicine? Yes, it is exciting and seeing new innovations and cutting edge, what can be done with neuromodulation, what can be done with pump therapy where appropriate, what can be done with this whole new world of regenerative medicine that's coming up with stem cell therapy and related. So, Are you using all the newest stuff? Like if they go to your centers, can they be pretty much rest assured that if it's out there, if it's available, if it's indicated, chances are you guys are using it. That's correct. Is that right? That's absolutely So right. you're very aggressive when it comes to pain? Meaning aggressive using all the new stuff. Correct. We want to be the tip of the spear. Now, you know, we talked about getting off opioids. Have you got like a, a few people off of opioids? Lots of people off of opioids? Well, we would Hundreds? Have to, yeah, I have easily a hundred or more gotten off and even a greater number that's been significantly tapered. Is that, right? is that your specialty as interventional pain management physicians? Like you guys, not anti-medications, but you're trying to go a more natural approach? Is that uh, right? That's correct. And uh, using interventional care is certainly uh, a big reason that we, or big, a big component of the care is interventional that we use to decrease the opioid need and load. Uh, there's times when opioid management is certainly appropriate. We want to minimize that. If we look at a patient's treatment plan as a pie chart, we okay. want that opioid slice to be as slim as necessary. Is that right? And it can be done. And it can be done. I mean, because everybody that takes op opioids is because they're in such bad pain, but they, they do work. But there's so many side effects, and you're saying there possibly is a better way for most people. Correct. That and right? that's, that's what the world of interventional pain is all about. So what are the, like the frequently asked questions a patient comes in and you're talking to them about the stimulation therapy to block the signal to their brain, to confuse the signal, is that kind of what you're doing? Yeah, we, uh, we block it and mask it. Okay, and so what do they want to know? Like what are their questions? Well, first of all, they seem concerned that, well, something's going in my spine. Okay. Well, I get that, and we talk about that. And they have questions along, well, what are the side effects? What could go wrong? Uh, why should I do this? And uh, all these questions. And, you know, we go through a thing called an education uh, that we address all these things and educate them about the device and answer all their questions and make sure they have a good understanding of talking, of, of what we're doing with it and what's going on. Okay. And uh, we want them to participate in their care and to be in that decision-making process. And that's one of the reasons we take it through such a format. Have you uh, had people that were scheduled for a surgery, and since we're talking about stimulators, because I know there's a lot of things you do, we're just talking about that today, but have you had people scheduled for surgery and they were able to avoid surgery with what we're talking about today? The answer is yes. A lot? A good number in uh, multiple different reasons and cases. Very often, surgery is being recommended or contemplated and the surgeon themselves sends the patient to us because the patient may have medical comorbidity that makes the surgery very risky or the patient just may be saying, I don't wanna have surgery, what else can be done? And we get the referral from the surgeon themselves and we look at it and do some intervention or uh, stimulation and help the patient that way. Okay, good. And, and, and we were talking about Dr. Manchikanti, that your challenge is getting people early onset with their pain. Yes. Because by the time they get to you, they've had pain for five years, they're on lots of medications, they think they've tried everything. Yes, and typically the earlier in the course we get them, the more we'll have to offer. What, what do you mean by that? Like, a, what's a huge, I mean, it seems like a simple question, but why would, why is it beneficial? If somebody's in chronic pain, they're chronic pain, why go into you earlier 
Why is it better with their outcome? Well, if they see their primary care doctor earlier, very often they get treated with medication, including opioid, which gets escalated as time goes by. Okay. And then they end up with us and they're already on a big opioid dose. If they had come to an interventional pain doctor earlier, okay. that outcome could be far different. Meaning you could have possibly avoided opioids altogether? Correct. And that happens a lot? when we get them early enough. <laughs> okay, good. Let's move over, since we're talking about medications, to these implantable pain pumps. Okay. Going into this, I thought, wow, I mean, you're getting a pain pump. That's like more medication. You're saying it's less. So tell me who's a candidate and kind of how it works. Okay. The, the best candidate typically for an implantable pain pump is that individual that's had chronic pain for some time has failed other interventional techniques, including maybe even stimulation, has very widespread pain where there's no good target for neuromodulation. When you say widespread, what do you mean? Near global pain. Uh, imagine someone and- They a, hurt all over. Yeah, they hurt all over. And they have severe spinal disease in the neck, severe spinal disease in the back, and severe spinal disease in between. So you have a huge target body-wise. It could be a person uh, with end-stage cancer that has metastatic disease across their body. Okay. And they're on significant oral opioid at presentation. So these are good candidates to put an implantable pump in. So when an individual presents with widespread near global pain, be it from spine disease from the base of the neck to the bottom of the pelvis, or whether it be from cancer that's metastasized throughout the body. Uh, these individuals may present to you on huge dose of opioid with all kinds of side effects, constipation, sleepiness, uh, sleep apnea. Some people can't even drive, is that true? That's true. Okay. And, or they certainly shouldn't drive. All right. And uh, so these are good candidates to consider for a pump trial. We talked about a stimulator trial and a very similar thing is done with the pump. You do a pump trial as well and if successful then you can discuss the implant. But they will be on a controlled delivery system of medication and on far less medication overall because it's delivered centrally. I think you told me on the phone that more than not, it's 90 percent reduction in medications when you do a pump. That means you're able to with a very small dose, maybe even 1%, 5% of the dose, because you're, you're administering it directly where there's a problem. Correct. So now their side effects go away. Well, they don't go away. They or should they're diminished. Lessen. They should lessen and be in a more controlled situation where there will be less concern of risk. So within our practice, we've had patients come in that have been on high doses of opioids, have failed other therapies, including interventional care and have had a pump put in and it improved everything. They're off of oral medication. Their functionality as a, you know, with daily life function is far improved. They're happier, the relationships with their family are happier and their side effects are less. So for people with pain throughout their body, cancer patients, it's fairly routine. I mean, it takes you about an hour, put in this uh, implantable pump. It just trickles out small dose of the medication, like 95% less of the medication, and it does the same job. Or better. Or better. With less side effects. So what's the resistance from the patient? Just hearing, you know, I gotta have a implantable device put in? Is that that's the challenge? That's basically it. You know, that's basically it. Uh, you know, there's concern about, oh, they're gonna put this thing in my spine, they're gonna put this thing in me, and it kind of sounds scary at It first. also, I mean, look, to me as a lay person, it sounds like more medication but it's actually less. It's less. Is that right? A lot less. Okay, Correct. so we are completely out of time. What are some of the new things we haven't even talked about that you're excited about as far well, as we can talk getting about, rid of pain? Yeah, regenerative medicine uh, is, uh, is, is a rising part of our specialty uh, and I'm very interested Define in that. Define that, what are, we, what are we talking about? Well, with regenerative medicine, we uh, typically are regenerating tissue or helping it grow and regenerate itself. In some ways, we're turning back the clock okay, to okay. a younger status of a 
soft tissue structure, a joint, connective tissue. And now we can apply this into the spine itself with respect to disease related to some disc. Uh, are we talking about stem cells here? What are we talking about? We're talking about stem cells are part of it. Okay. You know, PRP or platelet-rich plasma is very commonly used. And then we want to get into real stem cell therapy. We're talking about bone marrow concentrate and so forth. But, uh, and this is autologous. It comes from the patient themselves. It's processed and re-injected where it need be. And we can apply this now to facet joint needs in the spine to treat facet arthritis and pain and certain disc conditions we can inject it into the disc as well. So these are some of the things and this is the new hot thing on the horizon. We have that, we have new SI joint interventions. What does that mean? Sacroiliac joint. It's okay. where the base of the spine hooks into the pelvis on the back side of the hip and that joint is a pain generator. It can produce low back pain, it can produce buttock pain. So you inject the patient's own stem cells, like a mixture, in there, and mm -hmm. they're reporting getting better. That's right. Wow. So that's the new hot thing right now. That's our patients that's starting to ask a lot. Our, our, our patients starting to ask a lot about this. We're starting to see more. Yes. Okay. Good. Final message. Somebody watching this, they have a lot of pain. Maybe they're taking a lot of pain medications. They haven't heard about implantable devices. They haven't really even heard about spinal cord stimulation. And if they have, maybe they just discarded it. Maybe your presentation today, maybe thought, maybe. So what do you say to them? They're still skeptical. They've heard everything you have to say. Well, come in and see us and talk to us about it. We'll review everything and answer all your questions. And hopefully we have something to help you with. Anything we haven't talked about? Because I know you had a list of things you wanted to talk to me about. Well, I'd like to bring up, uh, well, our wellness program we'll be introducing okay. with weight loss programs uh, using anti-inflammatory diets and lifestyle changes and hormone optimization to benefit people's overall health and well-being. Is that right? Do you believe like the second half of their life could be the best half? You know, because you got wisdom, you got perspective. So if you're 50, 60 plus and you've got energy and feeling good, out of pain, well, certainly that's, big deal. that's my personal hope, <laughs> but yeah, I hope we can help people. You get hugs on from patients? Yes, I have gotten hugs from patients. Do they ever say like, this is a miracle? I have heard that. Is that right? And I wish I could hear it more. Do they like to give you credit sometimes? Like they'll say, doc, you changed my life. You ever I, hear that? Yes, I have heard that. Okay, good. But it's actually them changing the life. And, and people become more active. That means couch potatoes. When they're out of pain, they must have more energy to live and their life. That is a huge component, you know, and the program can help get them more engaged and desiring to get off the couch. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Good stuff. Thank you, sir. All Enjoyed right. it. And you still see patients at the center, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. You're watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez the authority on health issues.